Hello everybody, how are you? Welcome to today's Live at Five where we're talking about the five mistakes I made going gluten-free and how you can avoid them. I'm Janine Troutman, I am the founder of Minding Your Soul. And if you're a part of this group, then you know why I created it. I was very sick a long time ago. I was laying in bed paralyzed in my arms and my legs, and I made a promise to God. I said, if you help me get out of this bed, I will spend the rest of my life telling people how I did it and teaching them the same thing. So that's what Minding Your Soul is. Week by week, I give you guys a snippet of what I did, and hopefully you're compounding that information every week and healing. I love hearing about Am I on here, right? Okay, okay. I just wanna make sure that I can see the comments. Okay, there we go, we got somebody. All right, so if you're jumping on, say hi, let me know where you're from. Um, it's so much nicer talking to people when, um, instead of just like, talking to myself here. Okay, so we're gonna get started first with the first question is, why should I go gluten-free? Like, what's the big deal? Gluten feeds the Epstein-Barr virus. The Epstein-Barr virus is what's causing your symptoms. There's no such thing as an autoimmune disease. Your body doesn't attack itself. What happens is you have the Epstein-Barr virus inside you, and even if you got tested for the Epstein-Barr virus, you're going to, most likely, it's going to come back that you have the antibodies and not an active virus. So a lot of people will say, oh, well, I, you know, I had it once before, but I don't have it now. If you've ever had the Epstein-Barr virus, you have it now. Unless you have biopsied all of your organs and know for a fact that you don't have it, you definitely have it. Because what happens is, Epstein-Barr first goes into your bloodstream. That's where it can be detected. And once it leaves the bloodstream, it makes a run for one of your organs, most likely the kidney or the liver. Uh, that's where your heavy metals are going to reside and that's what it loves to feed on. The other food is gluten, corn, dairy, all those things, oh and eggs, big eggs. All of those things feed the Epstein-Barr virus. So in order to heal your symptoms, you need to be gluten free, you need to not feed the virus. So. Going gluten-free is one of the biggest things, and so many people say it is the most daunting thing to do. Um, let me make sure I can see the comments, because sometimes I can't. All right, so if one of you, I see there are two people are on right now. If you could just send me a comment, say like a quick hi, how are you, or whatever, just write, type something. Let me know that I can see the comments, because I don't know why sometimes I can't see the comments. All right, so if you guys are talking, I can't see them. Just so you know, that's why I'm not responding. All right, so I'm gonna go right into <clears throat> five the mistakes that I made going gluten-free. The first one was I didn't know what I was looking for. I wasn't completely educated on what was gluten and what's not gluten. Gluten is the protein, just the name of the protein that's found in a couple grains, wheat, barley, and rye. Don't eat those, they have gluten in them, okay? The gluten-free ones, rice, quinoa, buckwheat, corn, teft, sorghum, and oats. Yes, or oats are gluten-free. Why do you have to buy certified, uh, certified gluten-free oats? That, oh, hi Arden, thanks for saying hi, thank you so much. I wasn't sure if I could see the comments, so I appreciate it. If you guys are jumping on, please say hi, let me know that you're here. And if you have any questions, you don't have to wait until the end. Just, I, I love, just send me the, type in the questions and I'll answer them as I'm going. Um, now, I know, Arden, you're already gluten-free. You've been gluten-free for probably longer than I have been. So if you have any tidbits, just type them in so we can share with the other members. Because a lot of times, it's daunting to think about it, but once you hear from other people that, oh, it's not that bad, here's what I learned, or here's what got me through it a lot quicker. Um, okay, so the reason why oats are sold as certified gluten-free, even though they are naturally gluten-free, is because the processing equipment used to process wheat is the same equipment used to process oats. So manufacturers are gonna make, you know, make their money by processing wheat and oats since they have the same machinery. Now a lot of times like Bob's Red Mill, they'll have a dedicated facility. I think all of their facilities are dedicated gluten-free. So it's not that the oats have gluten in them, they're not a grain that contains gluten, but the cross-contamination is so high that I just buy regular gluten-free oats. And the reason is because I don't know how sensitive I am. And I don't have the luxury of finding out, so I just avoid all sorts of gluten wherever I can. So, um, beer. Beer is another one. A lot of people don't know that beer is fermented wheat. Soy sauce is fermented wheat. Um, barley malt in one of the ingredients. Um, you'll see barley malt a lot. 
barley has gluten in it. So you want to stay away from any ingredient that says barley malt. So that's number one. Um, I didn't know what I was looking for, so I accidentally glutenized myself repeatedly in the beginning. So know what you're looking for, know what grains contain gluten, and know other names for wheat. I'm just looking this up real quick. There are a couple other things where if you were to read the ingredient statement, you would go, oh, this doesn't have any wheat in it, it doesn't have any um, rye or barley in it, I'm good. But you might see some of these words, semolina, another name for wheat. Spelt, farina, gram, emmer or emer, faro, and udon. Those are all other names for wheat. Now, I rarely see these in the ingredient statements, except for maybe gram and semolina, of course. We see that all the time. But I rarely see those. But if you're ever in the grocery store and you need to know, is this gluten free, just Google that word. Is, is gram gluten free? And you're going to get it right there. It's going to be nice and quick. So, number one, know what you're looking for. Know where the gluten is, know where it hides. Number two, the second mistake I used to make is letting myself get hungry and being unprepared. I could never be in a place where I was start. I'm trying to get this, I'm so sorry, I'm trying to get that glare off of my glasses. If I stand like this, maybe I can do that. I gotta get the contacts. I actually bought contacts and I can't wear them. They're horrible. Uh, I keep trying them and I put them in for about five minutes and then I take them out and then it's such a struggle to get them out. Anyway, um, number two is letting myself get hungry and being unprepared. Let's say at the office, you didn't bring anything to eat. You forgot your lunch at home, right? And there's nothing in the office that's gluten-free. You're starving. Somebody brings in a whole box of Dunkin' Donuts and you know how good Dunkin' Donuts smells, right? Oh my goodness, and you're starving. How hard is it gonna be for you not to grab that donut and think, it's just one donut, how bad could it be? I mean, I've given up mostly everything. I want you to know that the size of a thumbnail worth of gluten is enough to take you down for six weeks. The reason why I say six weeks is because the Epstein-Barr virus has a lifespan of six weeks. So once you feed it, you bring it to life, it proliferates, you have six weeks until that virus dies again from you starving it, right? Not eating any gluten, cleaning out the heavy metals. Six weeks. In that six weeks, you're gonna get your symptoms back. After those six weeks, you're still gonna have three to four weeks of the neurotoxin, which is the dead virus, the corpse of the virus, still, it's a neurotoxin, it's still causing symptoms, the brain fog, the fatigue, the, the sheer exhaustion, the numbness, the tingles, the electrical shocks. God, um, you're still gonna get all of that for another couple of weeks. So never leave yourself unprepared. Make sure you always have food in your, in your um, purse in your desk at work, in your glove box, always had bars, always had some kind of good, gluten-free, good tasting bars. So if I was in a pinch, I would never have to sacrifice my gluten-free diet for, for something that I knew was gonna take me down. So always be prepared. Number three, third mistake I made, I didn't have the confidence to say no thank you. The reason why I say this is because of one particular time I was at my sister's house. She was um, her her daughter's baptism. Whole family was over. Her husband's whole family was over, and she had made a dish, and she knew I was gluten free. But it was really early on in the journey, and I said, I said, Christina, is this gluten free? And um, she's like, Yeah, I really think it is. Mm, think, yeah. I'm like, um, Okay. And I knew she was really busy. I mean, she had a house full of people, so I was gonna be like, Can you dig out the ingredient statement of that box and let me know? No, so it's just like, okay. And she sees me not eating it from over in the kitchen. I'm at the table and she looks over. She's like, oh, Jean, what, you're not gonna eat now? And I'm like, well, I'm just, I'm not sure. I don't wanna, she's like, really? This is, really, this is what you're gonna do today of all days? And back then, I was like, no, 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 no. Of course not, I'm, I'm gonna eat it. I was down for two months after that, two months, because it wasn't gluten-free. Back then, 15, 13, 13 years ago, I did not have the confidence to say, no thank you, I can't eat that. And I'm sure it probably is gluten free, like you said, but I can't take that chance. I can't afford to take it. I'm sorry, um, thank you anyway, but I'm good with what I have over here. And you eat side dishes of the vegetables or the potatoes or whatever you can get your hands on. Um, have the confidence to say, no thank you. 
This next one, the fourth one, comes from my daughter. She said, forgetting. I'm like, what do you mean? Because I asked her, I said, what do you think the biggest mistakes are when you, you made when you first went gluten-free? And she said, forgetting. I'm like, yeah. She went to the coffee shop with her friends and she got an avocado toast and she forgot. She wasn't, she goes, mom, it just, it wasn't in my mind. She goes, you have to, these were her words exactly. You have to break the habit of just getting what you want versus what you can safely eat. So many of us have lived our entire lives ordering anything we want. We look at a menu, we go, oh, that looks good, and we order it, and then we eat it. And we have so much going on, whether you're with your friends or you're with your kids, you have so much going on that you don't think. You forget, and then you eat something, and then you're set back again for another month or two. F be mindful, be mindful of everything you put in your mouth. Again, I have another sister story. So we're in church, we're at a funeral, and we're all sitting there, it's a Catholic church, and we're kneeling down in the pews, and instead of making an entire line for the Eucharist, or the body of Christ, we, um, the, the priest came around and just like handed it to us. And so there I was, and I said, no, thank you. I couldn't do it because I didn't know what was in it, right? Like, what is that Eucharist? What is it, what is that wafer made of? So I didn't eat it. My sister, who recently had gone gluten-free because she saw my success, she puts the Eucharist right in her mouth. And I go, Christina, what did you just do? She's like, what? I go, do you know what that's made of? She goes, no, no, let me Google it. So she gets on her phone right in the middle of church. She Googles it. She goes, oh my God, I just ate wheat. Why didn't you tell me? I go, Christina, you are responsible for everything that you put in your mouth. I didn't know if it had wheat in it, so therefore I didn't eat it. That's what you have to do. You have to assume that you're going to get glutenized. You have to assume that you're going to be taken down. Make sure that you are safe at all times by knowing what you're putting in your mouth. Have the confidence to say, even to the priest, and that was really uncomfortable, have the confidence to say, no thank you. Arden says, I carry a food pack always, food bars, plant protein, shakes, apples. Aren't apples great? All of those things, yes, but apples are so great because they're so portable, right? They're good cold, they're good hot, they've been sitting in your car all morning. Yeah, that, those are excellent, excellent uh, things to always have on you. Make sure you always have that food on you. All right, so we did number four, forgetting. Uh, okay, ready? The fifth mistake that I made going gluten-free is not owning it. Not owning it. Not owning that I am now Meg Ryan in When Harry Met Sally and it's gonna take me 10 minutes to order off of a menu and I'm gonna have a shit ton of questions and I am now that person. Uh, and I'm now that person that I never wanted to be. So, yeah, it's, it's not easy. You really, you don't realize that it's an entire identity change, but it is. It's an entire identity change. You are now gluten-free, and that means that you have to ask a shit ton of questions. I still, still, it has been 13 years of being gluten-free. I still panic. If, my, if I put a food in my mouth, and I know it's gluten-free, but it's something different, it's new, my brain goes, what, what, what is this? What is this? And the other side of my brain goes, it's fine. It's gluten-free. You read the ingredients. Are you sure you read the ingredients? Yeah, no, I read the ingredients. It's fine. Well, how do you know? Maybe you're forgetting. And my brain will keep going and going until the kids know, my husband knows. I will get up in the middle of dinner, walk over to the garbage, take the thing out, look at the word gluten-free, throw it back in the garbage. Now that's today. Back in the day, years ago, if I was eating a new food that I knew was gluten-free, I would have to keep the box in front of me where it said gluten-free while I was eating to control my mind because I would go down as a single parent I you can't go down for six weeks you can't work you can't take care of your kids you know how it is the way you feel right now if you are not gluten-free the way you feel right now you don't have to feel that way you don't have to be exhausted you don't have to worry about not making it throughout your day or when you're gonna take naps or consolidating your energy that was my life I didn't know how I was going to go through, get through each and every day. I would wake up in the morning and say, okay, I'm going to get through breakfast and then I'll worry about after breakfast, after breakfast. And I would have my kids in their pajamas, and this is when I was a single parent, which was really early on in my journey. Yes, he left very early on in my journey. Whole nother, whole nother video for that one. 
if you guys are interested, um, I would put my kids in their pajamas by dinner time because I knew my body would shut down right after dinner and there'd be nothing I can do. And there were times where my kids were five and eight and it was all systems down for mommy and I'd be on the couch completely passed out, but I would be conscious enough to know what was going on around me, but I couldn't open my eyes and I didn't have the energy, any energy, it was like I was paralyzed. And, and couldn't move. So I knew what was going on in the house, but there was nothing I can do about it. And that lasted for hours until I finally got up the strength to get up and make sure the kids were in bed. Thank God nothing happened. But if this sounds anything like your life, please reach out to me. Please do all the things that I said in the video. I'll be coming out with my program soon and then you'll be able to see all the steps that you can take to completely eliminate that. Look at me now. Right? I'm, I'm Italian, so of course I talk with my hands all the time. I was in bed, paralyzed in my arms and in my legs, and changing my diet, changing the way I eat, and understanding, finally understanding what was causing my symptoms, the Epstein-Barr virus, and then how to kill the Epstein-Barr virus, how to starve it so that I, my immune system could kill it, and then I had to detox it out of my body. And now I figured out how to do all of those things every single day, and it's just become part of my life. And it can become part of your life too. Um, it's not as hard as you think. It's actually a lot easier than you think, but I have a guide. If you are watching this live and you want this guide, whether you are watching it live or you're watching the replay, just type guide in the comments if you want my five steps to going gluten-free. I put it all together so that it was an easy to follow step-by-step -step guide. And not only that, there are substitutions for breakfast, lunch, and dinner in there. Really easy gluten-free, you can prepare them for yourself, your, your husband or, or your spouse can prepare them for you. And it's like 21 pages of all the information that you could possibly need to go gluten-free. Um, of course, I offer coaching uh, services. Now, you could use them or you could do it on your own. I didn't have somebody coaching me through it, so obviously it is possible to do it. But if you don't have the time and you want that full transition, just go to mindingyoursoul.com, go to contact me, and you'll see all the sessions and the prices there. I try to keep them as inexpensive as possible so that everyone can afford them. Um, but again, give it a try. And you have to give it a try for at least 30 days. And it's going to suck in those 30 days. I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to suck in those 30 days when you're first going gluten-free, which is why I tell you to do give yourself about a month to transition and then give yourself another month to um, have it all done, right? And start going through the withdrawal symptoms because your body really does go through withdrawal symptoms and it also goes through a lot of detoxing. So you're starving. When you go gluten-free, you're essentially starving the Epstein-Barr virus, right? It's dying, and it's dying at a very rapid rate, which is a good thing. It's gonna lead to your healing. But a lot of die-off means a lot of neurotoxins are floating around your blood, so the brain fog might get worse. Um, the not being able to keep your thoughts together might get worse. The fatigue might get worse. But I'm telling you, once you have detoxed off of it, off the gluten, it is amazing. It is absolutely amazing how you feel. So again, um, if you're on live or if you're watching the replay and you want this guide, let me know. It's PDF. It's like 21 pages, but it's PDF. It's not a huge file. So um, I might have your email address. If that's how you got into this group, you put your email address in. But if you didn't, then uh, I'll let you know and I'll just ask you for it. But um, all right, that was everything. Five mistakes I made when going gluten-free and hopefully I ta taught you how to avoid them. There's a great gluten-free guide here to make things easier and there's also coaching available. So um, I didn't announce in the beginning so I just want to say one thing. This month's and Arden if you're still on here I know you're part of the um, subscription. So the monthly clearing the MS monthly clearing group is meeting on the third Sunday this month instead of the fourth Sunday. So that is the 18th. July 18th, yeah. So July 18th is the new, um, is the, not the new, but this month's monthly clearing group session. Now, if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, go to mindingyoursoul.com, go to resources, and read all about the MS Clearing Group. It was specifically created for the members of Minding Your Soul, for the people who have MS. We come together once a month and Catherine Rose, who is a vibrational healer, clears all of our shit. And that's exactly what it feels like. It feels like 
And you don't even know how heavy you felt until after these sessions when you feel so much lighter and you actually look forward to them every month because you start feeling it. You start feeling like, God, I really need that again. So I'm really horrible at explaining it, even though I've been using her services now for at least 10 years, um, which is why we wrote it all down and did an interview that you can watch if you want to. So that's on mindingyoursoul.com on the resources button. Okay. Oh, Arden, wait before we go. Arden says, read packages carefully because a lot of times the gluten-free and the regular packages look the same. Arden, how many times I have done that? You're so right. Excellent point. So sometimes, like for instance, Vans Waffles. Vans Waffles in my grocery store have a regular version and they have a gluten-free version and they're right next to each other. And one time I came home and I saw that I had, thank God I saw this before I opened it, that I had bought the um, regular waffles instead of the gluten-free. So yeah, you have to be very careful. God, I did that with, it was the night before a holiday, either Thanksgiving or Christmas, and I was going to make like this Spanakopita. I think I was going to make Spanakopita. So I wanted the um, puff pastry the gluten-free puff pastry. So I take a 25 minute ride to Whole Foods, exhausted. I don't feel like doing this, but I did it because they promised my mother I would bring a gluten-free Spanakopita. Well, went the 25 minutes, I searched the entire store, I asked somebody where it was, they tell me, I finally get it, I drive all the way home, I'm laying out all my ingredients, it's defrosting because you gotta use it for room temperature, right? And I look at the goddamn box and I didn't grab the gluten-free one. It was right next to the regular one and I grabbed the regular one because at the last minute, I was like, oh, this one's cheaper, let me get this one, not realizing that it wasn't the gluten-free one. Arden, excellent, excellent. Thank you so much for bringing that up. And like I said, if you're watching the replay, keep those comments coming because this is something that a lot of people refer back to. I also put this on YouTube so that all of the YouTube people can look at it if they're not on Facebook. So put the comments in. All right, I think I think I did everything. And oh, Arden, you're so welcome. Thanks for being on with me today. I think it's just me and you on the live. Um, I've noticed like in the summer, it's so nice outside. People are not on the lives as much. And you know what? That's fine because I know you guys are watching later. So you don't have to be on the lives. It's just more fun when I'm talking to people. But Arden, I had so much fun with you. Thank you so much. All right. Well, you have a great, <laughs> you have a great night. And um, I'll talk to everyone soon. All right. Bye-bye.